Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, fellow countrymen, a man of God who loves the Lord, a man that I'd just soon hear preach as anybody. I love him to death. From Gainesville, Florida, but soon to be transferred to the New Jerusalem by rapture of the Church of the Living God, Brother Jeff Arnold. Would you welcome him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we're just about pooped. <laughs> Didn't want to ruin my image. Praise God. Thank you for the honor and privilege to be a part of something greater than I am. Thank you for letting me come to this great church and conference. And uh, thank you for letting me speak to you. I've listened to all the stories and references of folks who've had family that raised them in the church. And I've heard the other side of the spectrum where they lived in the world, such as myself. My emotions have been up and down, in and out. I've suffered four or five minor coronary arrests in the last three days. <laughs> I found myself a great saint and a horrible backslider. <laughs> Praise God. And I won't belabor the point, it's five after nine. And uh, if you would just indulge me for just a little while. I have preached with every preacher that's been here. I have worshipped with every singer that has sung. I have yearned and longed and, and uh, it's not an easy thing to be the cleanup hitter. It's the bottom of the ninth, it's two out, bases are loaded, and everyone's saying, hit it out of here, Arnie. <laughs> I'm going to swing at it. You have your Bibles, and very quickly, without trying to... Uh, Get you all hyped up. Exodus 3. And then I'll go to Ephesians 1. Praise God. You know, I know this, folks. Nobody needs to tell me or have to write me letters. I know I'm not a class act, okay? Now, now wait a minute. I'm, I don't have the, the class and the polish, which I think a lot of us have and you know and, and they're needful and they're good but you won't find anybody that is any more honest than I am I really do love God and I just want to do right and be saved and if somehow in this few closing moments God would help me to impact you wait, wait a minute impact you not impress you if I could impact you with what has just recently impacted me, then the icing will be on the cake and the candle will be lit and no hell can blow it out. And we'll go home and the whole thing will make sense in the next 40 minutes. Exodus 3, verse 13. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? 
What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me. And God said, Moreover, to Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Ephesians 1, verse 17. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Paul is praying for the church and he's simply praying out loud and he says, My prayer for you is not success. And my prayer for you is not a great church. And my prayer for you is not great sermons. Tell you what I'd like for my dad to give you, the Father of glory. I'd like for him to give you a spirit of revelation. that you might have knowledge of Him. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. And, and my message is simply releasing God to become what He already is. Releasing God to become what He already is. Father, what else can we ask? We've prayed for anointing. It's been here every message. We've prayed for blessing, and we're intoxicated with it. We've asked you for strength, and you've granted it. Now one last service, one last time, this thing that you have impacted my heart and mind with. Help me not just to speak words, but power. Spirit of revelation to descend into this auditorium. Ha! While I speak, Lord. Spirit of revelation to come to us. Understanding to liberate us. Knowledge of the holy to empower us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you and you may be seated. Praise God. I know nobody's really taking their jacket off. I'm going to. You'll have to give me ten minutes to talk and then I'll preach. God is a God of revelation. That really wowed you. Now I'm not going to try to be offensive, but I'll just be me. You cannot learn God. You discover yourself by God revealing Himself. You can't go to school and learn God. You can't buy tapes and read books and learn God. God is a self revealing God. He has high revelation to impart to this body tonight. Five sermons you have heard in the last two days have been peppered and full of these men speaking about God trying to show us and God 
trying to reveal to us. And every time they'd say something, my spirit would just move in me. Because I knew I'd heard from God for this last moment. Now stay with me. God can only give us revelation as we are capable of receiving. Jesus said to his disciples, I have many things to say unto you, but you're not able to receive them. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall bring to your minds everything I've told you. We quote so many times that scripture. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither enter the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for him. And we stop. That's a misquote. The next verse explains it. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. That's why it's the height of ignorance for anybody to say they're Christian and don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of God to us. Now just stay with me. Because God is absolute, total, complete wisdom, knowledge, and power. And we at our best are puny. It requires of God to take diminutive steps to allow us to catch up that we might climb up so we can wise up. Now, I'm going to say a couple of things that will be different. I'm different. Now, now watch this. Worship is our response to divine revelation. Yeah. We got 4,000 people sitting here. I got five people just going, yeah. <laughs> now, you ready for this? I'm not trying to hurt you, baby. Listen, Uncle Jay. You can praise without God. But you can't worship without revelation. Because praise declares to God what He is. But worship declares to God your concept of Him, your love for Him, and His love for you. And unless you've got a revelation, you cannot be a worshiper. That's why Paul asked for a spirit of revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, he was talking to people who had the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. They had been baptized in Jesus' name. They knew the gift ministry. They had apostolic power. But he's praying for them. I would that my Father, the Father of glory, would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of Him. Oh boy. Listen to me. There are two reasons for revelation. Just two. One is to allow worship. <laughs> two is that through worship, God is released to become for us what He already is to Himself. Our worship of God is totally dependent on our revelation. God cannot be for us what He is to Himself unless we see Him like that. The scripture says that shepherds were abiding in the fields, watching over their flocks. And angels came. Watch this. What did the angels do? Gave revelation. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You shall find this child wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Revelation precedes worship. There are four 
four steps to the victory. They had revelation. Secondly, they responded. Let us go. When they saw the child, the scripture says they glorified God, exalted God, praised God. They rejoiced. Whoops, this is going to hurt a little. Just hold on. Some of our rejoicing is not from Revelation. It's from B. It is all right. I'm going to tell you, sweet pumpkin, something. I come out of honky tonks. I'm an ex, yeah, the, the bishop called me a gambler. He didn't know how truth that was. I used to make lots of money running eight ball, nine ball, Chicago and straight pool. That's what I did. I was a hustler long before Paul Newman made the movie. And I'm not saying as kind as I can. Sometimes when I close my eyes and I hear And folks start going. Not much better than a bunch of idiots in Africa. They ain't got no revelation. They just got beat. But if you ever get a revelation of who he is, you'll start worshiping and you'll release him to become the great I am. Do you feel this? This is not praise. This is worship. And when you worship, anything's possible. forever sit down I got a hold of something doc Bible said it was revealed they responded they rejoiced now watch this is exactly where we is we're gonna get rev revelation right now we're gonna respond we're gonna rejoice you ready? Step four. 30 minutes. The conference is over. We'll do what the shepherds did. They reported it. If you get into a good so-called praise and worship service and it doesn't alter your lifestyle or open your mouth, you ain't got in worship. Because you can't get in His presence for just a few minutes that you won't walk out of there and want to share with somebody and tell somebody, Jesus is alive. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the baptizer. Jesus is the Lord of glory. He is the great I Am. Ha! I'm telling you, God is trying to give us a spirit of revelation. Anthony, Reverend, look, now I'm going to show it to you. I still got four minutes in this teaching before I start preaching. <laughs> Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. I'm going to prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. I look stupid, but I ain't stupid. And ye say that now, in wait a minute. Jesus is sitting at a well talking to a much married lady. <laughs> this lady's got the morals of a roach. tell you something honey we're living in a generation that's filled with lust and called it love lust is not liberty lust is bondage love and discipline and commandments and purity and righteousness if you love me keep my commandments and my commandments are not grievous unto you I'm not leaving the church I'm not going
going out to go honky tonking. This is the greatest thing that ever came to this planet. I'm not looking for anything but the coming of the Lord. I wish we could leave this thing hell to go there saying these words. Because we live in a world that constantly eating their fingernails, sucking their thumbs, saying, Oh my God, my God, what's this world coming to? My God, we ought to leave this conference and say, Let me tell you what came to this world. <laughs> Never mind what this world's coming to. The Christian ought to tell this world what came to this world. Now watch this. Jesus is talking to this lady. I've always thought Jesus was very economic in his way of doing things. He gathered the little extra pieces of fish and bread. But it was always strange to me, Reverend, that he would send 12 guys to buy lunch. <laughs> 12 guys. How big of a lunch are you going to pick up? He sent 12 guys to buy lunch. Now stay with me. You know why? You know why? Because contrary to the way I am and possibly some of you are, Jesus will go to the utmost extreme not to humiliate or embarrass a problemed person. That's good. Before he can give this woman a revelation of his deity, he must bring her to the turf called honesty. Sometimes a person finds it hard to be honest when there's peer pressure around. He didn't want her humiliated, so he just made the whole scene naked, sent 12 guys to buy lunch so he could have this lady get honest. Now watch, Jesus is talking to this lady. And this lady is blowing off saying, I'm, I'm religious. My, my Aunt Myrtle's religious. My, my Uncle Pete's religious. Whole Samaritan race religion. So we got this mountain here dedicated to religion. And, and, and now watch what she says. We worship. Read. Just back up Our a fathers worshiped in this mountain. You know what Jesus said to that lady when she said that? Now you find that in between the lines. That's interpretation according to Arnie. Now you think I'm kidding you. This lady is so fooled that she thinks her religion is worship. And her ceremony and her responding and her music and her doctrine is worship. Watch Jesus talk to her. Read. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yeah, geography. Read. Read. Jesus said unto her, Woman, watch this, watch this. How to win friends and influence people. Watch this statement. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. And now is when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Watch. Ye worship, ye know not what. But we know, lady, you don't know beans. Because unless you have a revelation of the object you worship, your worship is foolishness. of this conference brother Ewing is that we may know him if we can know him we can worship just finish reading just stay with me please just stay with me don't, don't yawn don't, don't leave stay with me please we know what we worship we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews because Jesus is a Jew he's God manifest in the flesh Salvation is of the Jews. We know what we worship. We have a revelation of God, so our worship is correct. You idiots who put labels on your church, 
You don't know beans. You just have ceremony. You have songs. Without the object, worship is meaningless. Now wait a minute. I don't want to get this lopsided. I'm not preaching about worship. I'm talking about revelation. Revelation gives you a response called worship. Once you worship, worship releases the object you worshiped to become what you saw him as. He is already that before you get the revelation. But it is your worship that lets him become to you what you behold him as. Read on, Elder. But the hour cometh, and now is, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father. Yes. In spirit in and spirit. in truth. Spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Right. Keep going. God is a spirit. This lady's getting a revelation lesson. God is a spirit. Read. And they that worship Him, they that worship Him, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And unless you understand that God is a spirit, you cannot worship Him in spirit and in truth. Watch this. Read on. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, what? which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all things. She's fixing to get her socks knocked off right now. Watch Messiah say something now. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. He just released that woman to enter into worship. Did she worship? Yes. How do you know? She left her water pot. Her water pot was her source of life. But she has a revelation. This guy's talking about a well. I've got a water pot. He just told me he is the Savior. What do I need the dumb bucket for? I'm going to get the well. Sit down a second. We don't have time to go through all this. If you read the rest of the story, she witnessed. Watch. Same theory. Revelation. Respond. Rejoice. Report it. Hey, I just met a fellow who told me everything I've ever done. Ain't that Jesus the Christ, the Messiah? Ain't that him? You know what she did? She won her city. That's worship from revelation. That gives birth to worship. And worship gives birth to release. And release gives birth to answers. Stay with me. It is impossible to worship God without revelation. Revelation is God's royal release. You cannot exalt what is unknown. You cannot magnify what you do not see in your mind. And you cannot love that which is unrevealed. She used her revelation to witness to her city. They received her revelation and then turned around and got their own revelation and traded hers in and said, We heard you. We've come out to see him. But now we believe because we've heard him for ourselves and believe that this is the Christ. Why was Paul so powerfully moved when he was in Athens, Greece, when he went by Mars Hill and he said, I beheld the way you folks worship. And I saw one of your altars to the unknown God. Watch what he said. Him that you worship, ah, uh, him that you ignorantly worship, I'm going to explain him to you. Because until you get a revelation of who He is, you can't release Him to become what He is already. Yeah. 
Point number two. I'm, I'm almost finished with my Bible study. Worship, true worship, requires God's presence. You may praise long distance. You cannot worship long distance. Worship is an interaction between two parties. I love you. I love you. Praises. You're swell. You're great. You're long-suffering. You're magnificent. Yay! Long distance. But when you get in the proximity of the Savior, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. I love you. I love you. Embrace. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got a long way to go. Hold on a second. There's a fellow, the Bible says, that the Holy Ghost, by revelation, has told him, you're not going to die until you see the Lord's Christ. His name is Simeon. He's a man of the temple. He's a praiser. He's a blesser of God. But the Holy Ghost has revealed to him that he shall not die until he sees the Lord's Christ. And he comes, the Bible said, and the Holy Ghost is on him, and he comes into the temple by revelation. And here comes this little Hebrew chick with this little bambino. And the kid's crying. And the Holy Ghost says, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I see that old man going. Hear what I'm going to try to tell you, great theologians. You'll never hold Jesus Christ to your bosom until you get a revelation that he's there. see the old man go over and pick that baby up out of that little Hebrew girl and said let me hold God a while and when he holds this little bubbler he worships God because he said and he blessed the Lord God of heaven and said I can die now honey you better not die till you get a hold of him the servant depart in peace for you fulfilled your word to me watch me now just one more point Bible study is almost over I told you the worship of God requires not only revelation but his presence the wise men come from the east you will be hard pressed great theologians to find one verse of scripture that ever said the wise men worshiped during the search They rejoiced when they saw the star, but they didn't worship until they saw the baby. Now watch this. They come walking into Jerusalem. Where is he? Watch the revelation. That's born king of the Jews. We've seen his star. Got to scratching my little theological mind one day. I said, what's the deal that they thought that, that the king of Jews would be told that he arrived by a star? And I got to read in the book of Numbers that old Gentile jerk, Balaam. Well, if God used a donkey, he can use a jerk. I know lots of jerks he uses. Watch this. Sister Mangan, listen to this. How did they know that the, the star indicated the king of Jews was born? I'm going to tell you. Balaam prophesied, a star shall rise out of Israel. The Gentiles were stargazers. They were used to studying the heavens. They had a Gentile prophecy that the ruler of Israel would be marked in birth by the appearance of a star. God did not use stars to deal with the Hebrews 
angels came to them because they had been conversant with angels. God usually will reveal himself to us in the dimension and area in which we are accustomed to function. They come looking to worship, but they cannot worship until they can find the object of their worship. He's not in the palace. He's not in the temple. They're just playing church. We've come to worship Him. Our worship depends on our revelation of Him and the proximity of His presence. The Scripture said, when they found the child, they fell down and worshipped Him. Wait a minute. He receives the worship. They receive His kingship. He is king of Jews. He is not king of Gentiles. King of Jews. But they are worshiping prophetically. For he will shortly be the answer to the Gentile dilemma. When they worship by revelation, they released him. To become for them what he already was to himself. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I, don't, I hope I'm not losing you. When we worship him like we see him, we literally release him to become to us what we see him as. Now, now, if I'm wowing you, I'll bring it down to street language. What you see is what you get. Jesus Christ came to reveal to us the Father, thus provoking us to worship, thus releasing the Father to become our daddy. He is father of creation by natural birth. He is father of recreation by spiritual revelation and birth. That's why when people look at you and say, well, we all got the same father. No, we don't. The devil's some people's father. Why didn't Herod worship Jesus? Because his revelation of Jesus was, he is a threat. And whatever you see him as, that's what he becomes to you. That's why some folks don't live close to God. The closer you get, the more you got to get your hiding carcass off your little kingdom throne. But if you ever see him as he is, you'll gladly get off the throne and let him get on the throne. If you ever see him like he has. Oh. Stay with me. I'm not trying. I have got to go longer than I need to. Yeah. Just Some people saw Jesus as a rebel. Some saw Jesus as a troublemaker. Some saw Jesus as a disruptor. Some saw him and labeled him, you glutton and wine bibber. Some saw him, you cast out devils by Beeslebub. You got a devil in you. You don't want to hear something powerful? Whatever you see him as is an indicator of what you are. Jesus said, be careful how you hear. Because it is a direct revelation of what you are. Well, I'm going to pastor right now for 30 seconds. 
I don't know how else to hit you with this. I'm going to tell you something. I am so humiliated and insulted when a preacher in a restaurant will have the gall to tell me a slightly off-color, risque story or joke. It is saying to me, that's what he thinks I am. There are some people in the body of Christ you wouldn't dare tell an off-colored story to. Why? Because what they are speak volumes to you. Be careful what you see him as. Be careful what you hear. It is a revelation of yourself. When they looked at him and said, you're a devil, they were devils. When they looked at him and said, you lying dog, they were lying dogs. The revelation is not just of him, it is of ourselves. Okay, just stay with me. Their blindness and their bias and their prejudice restricted him. Some saw the carpenter's son and missed God's son. Some saw a free meal ticket and missed the Messiah. Some saw the healer of their body, but not the Holy One of Israel who would heal their souls. Our concepts of Christ become chains or channels, restrictions or releases. All right. The Bible says Jesus Christ has absolute wisdom, knowledge, power, strength, and glory. But without a revelation of Him being that, He cannot be that to us. Jeremiah said, My eye affecteth my heart. Now just stay with me. I talked to you, we've heard the term so many times this week about the great apostolics. Let me present a great apostolic. His name is Thomas. We've seen the Lord, Tombo. And Tombo says, Baloney. <laughs> now watch this. Now, now, now please hear what I'm trying to tell you. This man has cast out devils. He was sent out by Jesus Christ with a special anointed ministry to heal the sick raise the dead, cleanse lepers. He was one that came back and said, Oh, Master, I'm rejoicing because devils are subject unto me through your name. He participated in the miracle of the fishes and the loaves. He was one of the worshipers in the boat when Jesus walked on the water. He is the promissory recipient of the promised Holy Ghost. His fellow disciples say to him, We've seen the Lord. He's resurrected. He said, I will not believe unless I see him and touch him for myself. Is it possible to have deep spiritual experiences with Jesus Christ and yet possess no revelation of who he is? You know what Thomas has? What some of us have. Sense faith. Sense faith. I will not believe until I can touch, taste, feel, smell. He's apostolic. Powerhouse. Apostolic. Casting out devils. Praying for the sick. But he doesn't see Jesus as a resurrection. He sees Jesus as a big yesterday in his life. Just a few more minutes. Excuse me, just a few more minutes. The light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, when your eye sees real good, Thy whole body also is full of light. The whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, when your eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. You got full of darkness. Take heed, therefore. Take heed. Watch out. Be careful. 
That the light which is in thee be not darkness. Be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light. Full of light. Having no part dark. Yes. The whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle the new doth day. give thee light. Whew. Sit down a second, please. Thank you. When a lamp is smoky in a room, everything that you look at is distorted. When you are colorblind, you cannot pick up the redness of a rose. When you are nearsighted, you cannot see your daughter or son on the faraway hill waving to you. And if you are in the position of having cataracts on your eyes, even though your sweet wife is sitting next to you, she is nothing but a blur. God is trying in these last few moments closing this conference to bring to us a spirit of illumination and enlightenment that he will become for us what every one of these sermons this week has told us he is. He already is that. But unless we get a revelation and worship to that, he will not be that to us. Eight. Almost there. No snoring. No snoring. You remember the story, Sister Deborah? Remember the story when Jesus put his hand on the blind man? And he says, how did it work? Did it do okay? And the blind man said, I see men as trees walking. Bad vision breeds fear. There's no such thing as men that are trees walking. What kind of monstrous vision does the dude have? Wait a minute now, I'm going to knock your theologian socks off here. Light comes before total revelation. When the light of this world touched the darkness of the man's eyes, the man saw light, but not clearly. But a second touch. How you see now, everything's clear and I'm no longer afraid. to believe brother Anthony the first thing the man saw after he touched him the second time was Jesus, Jesus. how you see oh I see great I see super I see fantastic oh praise God you can have light and not have revelation Apollos was a mighty man eloquent in the scriptures but knowing only the baptism of John, he had light, he had revelation. No, just light, just zeal, just righteousness. But here comes Aquila and Priscilla. They've got revelation. They share revelation with a man that's got light. Guess what happens? He gets baptized in Jesus' name. He gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I know he did it. The Bible said he was listed with Cephas, P. Paul, and Apollos in the Corinthians. My God, he's in with the big three. Honey, you ain't running with Simon Peter and Apostle Paul, and you just believe in Jesus. Them dudes are talking in tongues like a Chinese laundry day and night. You ain't going to go around talking in English. Them dudes raise the dead and walk on the water and cast out devils. You can't sign Billy Graham's card and accept Jesus. It won't work, honey, when they got Aquila and Priscilla's revelation. When they got him the revelation, he stepped into a new dimension and he saw God in the fullness of his light and his revelation. Sit down just one more minute. God, God, Father, Lord God, it's Dothan, it's Elisha, the enemy's here, the kid's scared, all he can see is the enemy, open his eyes, give him a revelation, he opens his eyes and he sees the mountains full of horses and chariots, man, when did they arrive, they were there about three weeks before. 
God don't own a time. He don't own a Timex, Doc. He don't break out in a sweat. He ain't gonna run to your rescue. Your rescue is ever present. You just need to see it. I've always loved that story, folks. It said that the mountains were full of horses and chariots. It's a reason why it's recorded that way. The valley was full of the problem. The hills were full of the answer. In order to see the answer, you got to get your eyes off the problem. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and made earth. There's help in the hills. There's trouble in the valley. I'm telling you, get your eyes off your problem. Lift up your eyes and see him because he's high and he's lifted up and he's everything you need. Sit down one more minute. Saul of Tarsus. Come on, let's have a quiz. Brother Spears, let's have a quiz. Saul of Tarsus, before he meets Jesus, he loves God, doesn't he? He loves God. Stephen, he loves God. He, he worships Yahweh. Jehovah. He worships the God of Israel. As best he knows how. He loves God. He's not a devil. He loves God. He thinks this Jesus stuff is a cult. I'll just put a commercial in for, I've heard a lot of this junk lately, it's kind of making me puke a little. <laughs> I wish you folks would get off these guys that we interviewed on TV and we ended up looking kind of cruddy and junky, so what? We didn't have all the answers, big deal. In the name of God, I hear all this junk about people calling us a cult, so what? What's the big deal? They called Jesus a devil. You didn't see him backslide and going to coronary arrest you didn't lay down for three years. He said, I don't believe in you. I'll find somebody that believes in me. We don't believe you're the Messiah. I could care less. I'm going to Calvary anyway. We don't believe in your word. I don't care what you say. I'm going to raise Lazarus anyway. I don't care what the world says. I could care less. I can care less about this world's opinion. There's only one opinion that matters. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Sit down a second. Now, I, don't, I don't mean to be rude. I really don't. I just, I think it's time to cut the baloney. I, God forget that junk. Ain't you never talked to somebody and you drop the ball, Flash. <laughs> Have you never talked to some dingbat that's trying to tie you up in knots and somehow your explanation just wasn't quite up to par and he walked out of your office and you kind of said, man, I didn't do good on that one. <laughs> that dude almost persuaded me. <laughs> you don't see me been a burnt offering sacrifice burning my license. Oh God, I failed. I didn't give a good answer. Man, I get to praying and fasting and studying. I'll get a better answer next time. But I ain't going to give myself an excedrin headache worrying about a bunch of junk what people think. Friend, I've got the truth. I've got the truth. I've got the truth. I've got the truth. And the truth's got me. And the truth's got me. And the truth's got me. I've got the truth. And the truth's got me. And I'm a worshiper. I see him as he is. Oh. Sit down a second. My God, I wish I had some room to run. Listen to me. Saul of Tarsus became a worshiper of Jesus on Damascus Road when Jesus gave him a private revelation a 15-minute theological discourse on who I is. Who is you? I is Jesus. You got trouble. Now watch this. Everybody say with me, he's going to hurt us now. But he's going to help us in a minute. Be careful, Pentecostals. 
Be careful, Jeffrey Wayne Arnold. Do you know the only thing that came out of Paul's vision was he got blind? Did you hear me? You read it. The Bible said he opened his eyes and saw no man. Is it possible that we folks who've been given the greatest revelation this side of eternity become blinded to everybody else? And the last thing we saw was our experience. The scripture said everybody saw the light, only Paul heard the voice. God's given light all across this planet. But you better be tuned into the voice, because the voice gives direction. The light just addressed your attention. Go in a city, it'll be told you what to do. Through obedience, he gets his eyes open, gets baptized in Jesus' name, and gets the Holy Ghost. In one day, he goes from a warrior to a worshiper. I want you to read something for me, Reverend. Matthew 16. I'm sorry, I told you the wrong verse. I'm, please forgive me. I'm not trying to take advantage of this good, good. situation, but this thing is on fire. Eight sixteen. I want 16, uh, Matthew 16, 16. Watch this. And Simon Peter answered and said... Oh, wait a minute. Back up a verse. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Yeah, he said, hey, Who do men say that I am? So, oh, you're... You're uh, Elijah, you're Jeremiah, you're one of the prophets. You might even be John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Man, uh, there's all kinds of rumors going on about you. <laughs> now watch this. It is very, very important. We've only got about 12 minutes. It's very, very important that we leave this conference knowing who he is. Because if we don't know who he is, then all these fabulous messages we heard ain't worth beans. And we'll just buy a bunch of tapes and scribble a bunch of notes and go in our pulpits and tell everybody what God showed us. We didn't come here to get sermons, Doc. We come for revelation. We need to discover who we are and who He is. It is extremely important to Jesus Christ that we know who He is. They said, whom do men say I am? When they went through all that stuff, He just kind of smiled and said, great. You see, Jesus had had angels telling folks who he was. Jesus had John the Baptist telling folks who he was. Even at his baptism at Jordan, the Father said who he was. And if that wasn't enough, he went and found demon-possessed folks and devils shouted who he was. But none of those declarations were important to him because they never released him to become that to people. People need their own revelation so that he can become what they behold. Folks say you're Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. Watch this. Who's but whom say ye that I am? Now we're going to $64,000 question. And Simon Peter answered and, and said, And old Pete jumps up. Thou art the Christ. Ha! You're the Son of the living God. Watch this. And Jesus answered uh, unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not, not revealed this unto you. But my Father. But my Father. Which is in heaven. Wait a minute. But my Father. But my Father. The miracles don't reveal it. The walking on the water didn't reveal it. Me raising the dead didn't reveal it. God is a God of revelation. And he has sent a spirit of revelation into your heart, Peter. My Father has revealed this to you. Do you hear what the Spirit is saying? Sit down a second, just a few more minutes. Read, read, Anthony. And I say unto thee, Watch this, Father, which is in heaven. Now watch this. And I say also unto thee, Ha, 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 what, what? That thou art Peter. Yeah. 
And, and upon this rock, yeah. I will build my church. After revelation comes promise. Wait a minute. Now we're going to go juking. Read. <laughs> I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Is there any more in there that sounds good? Yeah, it, we're doing pretty good. And I will give unto thee... Wait a minute. And after revelation comes gifts. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what we misquote thou that, we misquote that, we misquote that. He never said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. No. He said, of. Oh, you can have the keys to the front door, but you may not have the keys to the whole hotel. Jesus said, I'll give you the keys of the whole kingdom. You can open any door, any door, any door, any door. You can open any door. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. You've got the same keys. You've got the same keys. You got them. You got them. You got them. Read. I will you. give unto thee Watch. the keys of the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven. Watch. And whatsoever thou shalt bind. And after I give you, I give you gifts. I'll give you authority. Every message in this conference has been driving us to a place of revelation for tonight. God has been trying to take us to the high plane that we could finally see Him once in our lives. And we're talking about gift ministries and healing, casting out devils and all that jazz. You know what we're doing? We're attribute chasers. God has no character. You should never say God has character. God doesn't have character. Character is that which must be developed with time and chance. God can't get developed. He came full grown. He don't get better with time. He don't get stronger with years. He doesn't get wiser a million years from now. He's all wise right now. He's all knowledge right now. He's all power right now. He's all glory right now. Sit down. Just a few more minutes. See what we do? We pick out an attribute that God has. Wisdom, knowledge, glory, power, holiness, righteousness, whatever. And we long for that attribute. And we reach for it. It is possible to get a hold of an attribute of God and not have God. But the writer of Colossians said, in whom are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. If we can get Jesus, we can get all His attributes. I'm telling you, I'm confessing to this conference. I'll probably do a little bit more if I get a few more minutes. I'm confessing to you. I have fasted and prayed and agonized and wept and sought the face of God because I want God to use me to loose people who are sick who are hurting, who are bruised. I've asked God for supernatural healing ministry, for the gift of faith. I have asked God to somehow have the power of the Spirit, to take dominion over forces and things. Not so you can get my picture. My, my best photograph doesn't look good. My picture's not real good. It, it, it doesn't do anything for anybody. But that somehow people who, who are hurting could somehow be loosed. That somehow people who are wandering in oblivious darkness somehow could come to light. And God has so dealt with me about this very thought. Jeffrey, you're seeking the wrong thing like so many of my people are. You're wanting, quote, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. You're wanting this or you're wanting that. Why don't you just want me? And if I can get him... I get wisdom, and I get knowledge, and I get authority, and I get power, 
and I get glory and I get victory and I get everything that he is. Okay, we're going to finish. We're going to finish. I, I'm not done, but we're going to finish. It's enough. Peter's revelation of Jesus, watch this, released Peter to become a worshiper in that aspect of his deity, thou art the Christ. At the same time, his worship now releases Jesus to become the very thing that Peter sees him as, my Savior. I've heard a lot of dear tonight, last night, the other night, Elder Stone King, about healing, 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 healing. God talked to me, four o'clock this morning, in my motel. I wept, cried, prayed, talked in tongues. What's the matter with us? We do all this juking and jumping, and hanging from the roof, carrying on. Yeah. How come we're still sick? 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 You know what God said to me? Now, if I'm a liar, I'll meet that in the judgment seat of Christ. I'll find out if I was lying. But God said to me, my people don't see me as a healer. Now. Oh, they see me as a healer in the maybe land. I wish I had time to teach you about the will of God. If it's not the will of God for you to be well, why do you go to a doctor? Why do you take medicine? Why don't we burn Abe? Why don't we burn the hospitals down and arrest the doctors and the nurses if we believe it's the will of God for us to be sick? How stupid are we that we who are parents would give our children tuberculosis or polio or muscular dystrophy or emphysema or cancer so we could quote teach them a lesson are we stupid do we think our God is a devil that he just gets a big kick out of watching us writhe in pain and be tortured in agony you think every time I walk out of an airport and I see some little kid with braces walking like this my spirit I look at that and I said God you didn't do that that is not your will. That is the work of the devil. The devil is a liar. But you came to destroy the works of the devil. You came to put him to flight. God wants us well. But we must have a revelation that it is the will of God for us to be whole. Now I'm not going to get on that because it's a long road. And we're almost finished and you're tired and you've been so sweet. Listen to this. I'm going to quickly run through this. In Matthew 8, the Bible said, a leper runs up to Jesus and worships him, saying, what did I tell you? You can't worship long distance. It's got to be close. Worship him, saying, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. That's where we are tonight, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. We are right there. We do believe that God is able to heal. We don't know whether it is his will to heal. And that's why the leper couldn't get healed until not Jesus touched him. Uh -uh. Until Jesus spoke to him. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus looked at the leper and said, I will. The minute he realized that it was the will of God to be whole, the leper could now release his faith to the object of his faith, and he was instantly made whole. If it's not the will of God, Brother Kilgore, for us to be well, then Jesus Christ violated his own Father's will. Because 16 times in the Gospels it says he healed all. If it ain't the will of God for us to be whole, we better put the bus ministry thing, lucky number seats in here. Whoever sits on number 85 tonight and 16 and 35, you get your healing tonight. How can we ever pray the prayer of faith? Listen to me. You cannot have faith without knowledge. You cannot exercise faith beyond what you know. We label things faith that are not faith, they're hope. Hope is later, Brother Mitchell. Faith is right now. It's the evidence of things hopeful. It's the substance of things. It's your title deed. It's what you got in the bank. He healed him. He saw him finally as his healer. 
He not saw him as his own healer till he got the words from him. I will. Then he worships him in that capacity. It releases Jesus to become to him what he always was to himself. He's the absolute healer. A few verses later, the centurion comes and says, My servant's sick. He lied at the point of death. Come on, lay your hand on him and, and, and just make him whole. He said, I will come and heal him. Watch this. The minute Jesus releases words of authority and faith, I will come and heal him, the centurion picks up on it. Why? He's a man of authority. He understands how authority works. He says, I don't need your body. Just give me your word. He said, I'm a man of authority. I understand how authority works. I tell this guy, go, this guy, stay, this guy, go, this guy. I understand it. Just speak the word only in my servant as well. He says, you got it. You're going to tell me, poor old stupid brother Haney, poor old stupid Jeff Arnold, that God would do more for a heathen before Calvary than he would for his own children. You mean, Brother Tenney, he healed all that was sick during his humiliation? Now, during his glorification, he stopped. We need to worship. He's my healer. He's my healer. I see him as my healer. He's my healer. I don't care about that pain. I see him as my healer. And I release him to become what I see him as. can't go any further till we realize what I'm telling you is the truth from God. There is nothing beyond God's ability to do, but He's limited by our restricted revelation. Do you see him as the baptizer of the Holy Ghost? Do you see him as your exceeding great and reward? Is he your exceeding great and high tower? Do you have a vision of him as your provider? Stand.
stand. There's no need to go any further. I'll give you a homework assignment. My sermon is not over, but my time is gone. Read the woman with the issue of blood. Her healing came because she had a revelation. If I touch him, I'm well. Her touch was an act of worship. It released him to be her healer. Jarius had a revelation. Come, lay your hand on my dead daughter, and she shall live. She's dying right now. She's just about dead. Listen to me, folks. Even walking with God, you can get bad news. On his way to Jairus' house, the bad news comes and says, Forget it. Don't bother the master. The kid's dead. Before he could ever open his mouth in doubt, the word which Jesus was spun on his heels and said, Fear not. Only believe. She shall live. Jarius destroyed death by his silence. He had sowed words of faith and would not dig them up with the spade of doubt. How does the thief on the cross get saved? He has a revelation. This isn't a man, he's a king. He's a God, Lord. And when he says, Lord, remember me, he released Jesus to become his Savior. It's Mary sitting at the sepulcher, Sister Mangan, sitting at the sepulcher, weeping, weeping. And she sees Jesus as the gardener. Where have you taken him? Where is he? And she gets a revelation when he says, Mary. And she says, Rabboni. He went from the gardener to God in one minute. She went from weeping to worshiping in one minute. I am that I am. Tell my people that is my name to all generations. Why didn't Jonah want to go to Nineveh? Two reasons. Hated the Assyrians and had a revelation of Jehovah. Were not these my words while I was yet in my country that thou art a merciful God, gracious, long-suffering, and repenteth yourself of the evil that you do? He didn't want to share with the heathen what he knew God was like. Would you give me one last? I'm very sorry for keeping you. John 3. John 3. The Holy Ghost. I stand before God. God will strip me naked at the judgment seat before you all if I lie. God, in the Holy Ghost power, spoke to me a question. What made the prodigal return home? The Spirit spake to me and said, His revelation of His Father. John 3. Thank you for coming. Go home and read Isaiah, would you? Chapter 6. Read Isaiah chapter 6. It wasn't until Uzziah died he saw the Lord high and lifted up. He got a personal revelation. When he had the revelation, he was in a full-blown worship service that John was caught in a few thousand years later in the book of Revelation. Same worship service going on. Worship is so powerful when revelation is with it that it put it put Isaiah under conviction. 
Nobody damned him. Nobody condemned him. Nobody called him a dirty slime bucket. Nobody called him a devil and a backslider. The power of revelation and worship put him on his face. I'm undone. The minute he was under conviction, he confessed. The minute he confessed, he was cleansed. The minute he was cleansed, he, watch this, he heard also the voice of the Lord. There's no record in Isaiah 6 he ever heard the voice of God until he was cleansed. And after he heard the voice, he was commissioned. Go. Read, Reverend. I'm Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, right. because it knew him not. him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it Watch does this. not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Folks, my last thought, I'm gone. Love you. Thank you. You should have been with me. Four o'clock was a good time for me this morning. The Lord spoke to me again. My people use this verse of Scripture to vindicate their rapture theology. We know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. The Lord instructed me to tell you, you could be like Him right now if you could see Him as He is.